Radio. Good afternoon, and thank you so much for joining us. I always look forward to getting together with Gerald Salente. When it comes to trends, nobody knows what's going to happen. You know, maybe you go back to Nostradamus or something. But Gerald really has figured this out. He's been running the Trends Research Institute since 1980, and he's been trying to figure out trends, and he has a remarkable track record. And if you'd like to find out more, you can find out more by visiting, what is it, the uh, TrendsResearch.com, Gerald? TrendsResearch.com or for our publication, TrendsJournal.com. Take your pick, TrendsResearch.com or TrendsJournal.com. How you doing, Gerald? I'm doing well up here in Kingston, New York, about an hour and 45 minutes north of New York City, right off the most historic corner in the United States of America. That's right. It's the only place in the U.S. where there's a stone building that predates the Revolutionary War on each corner, each four corner. Really? Yeah. And um, I just bought one of them. (laughs) Ah, congratulations. Thank you. The the 1750s Franz Rogan House, R-O-G-G-E-N. And the primary reason I bought it was that this was a very instrumental place where the first American Revolution began, and I'm doing all I can to start the second one. <laughs> this one, of course, not of bombs and armies or bullets, but of uh, of mind and heart. And also, I would imagine, because it is something tangible, that's actual stone that you're talking about there that you can put your hand on, and it's not going to uh, vaporize in some account somewhere. That's right. And I also think, you know, that during, you know, I don't, I don't give financial advice, but as a trend forecaster, and you look at the current events making the news that, that create the future trends, uh, they've announced again the Federal Reserve that they're going to be dumping more money into the system. Uh, with their, they're, not, they're not calling it QE4, but that's what it is. And they're keeping interest rates to um, all-time lows. So I'm borrowing money, for example, a commercial loan at 3.25%, and that's good for 20 years. A 10-year gets readjusted at 10 years, and the bank is covering closing costs. So to me, as a trend forecaster, again, you know, this is you can't put your money in the bank anymore and make money off it because interest rates are paying virtually nothing. And if you could borrow money cheaply, and they're debasing the currency. Why not invest it in something that has historical value to it and uh, that I believe is going to be um, continue to hold its value? This is the monetary policy to force us back into the marketplace to do something with money to get it moving around again. You got it to keep the Ponzi scheme afloat. And as I see it again, we're going to be paying this back with um, much cheaper money in the future. As a matter of fact, don't listen to me. Listen to Mervyn King, the head of the Bank of England, who just a few days ago said that there's currency wars going on. And that means that countries are devaluing their currency so that they can have their exporters sell more products to foreign countries. Because the lower the cost of the currency, the lower the cost of the product and the more you can sell. So... That's one of the investment strategies I see for this year and next. Federal Reserve, how long can they keep this up before we start to see it break apart, until we start to see inflation, until we start to see the bond vigilantes rise up, and can they suppress those bond vigilantes? We're going to have a major piece in the Winter Trends Journal that will be out uh, by first week or so of January, and we'll be sending out a synopsis of it within a week or so. And it will be written by Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, who's the former Assistant Treasury Secretary under Ronald Reagan. Yes. And that's what that's going to be all about. And he believes that the bond bubble is going to be huge when it bursts, and that at some point interest rates are going to have to go up. And when they do all hell is going to break loose in the financial marketplace. Again, another reason, if you can afford it, and you're financially secure, and again, I'm not giving financial advice, only speaking for myself, 
that this is a good time to consider investing in things where because interest rates are going to go up and you'll be paying them back with low at low interest rate settings this past year gerald was one for the books wasn't it you know i've never seen anything like this sinclair you know i've been around quite a while you know i'm in, I'm in my mid 60s and uh, i've gone through many political campaigns this is the first one by the way i did not vote in I won't vote for a lesser of two evils. And, again, only speaking for myself, and I don't vote for a minor party because they never win and it's just supporting the system, which I perceive as corrupt. I've never seen a campaign that lacked so much excitement during the campaign and ended with a thud. There was no campaign election, post-election bloom. It fell right off the rose. And, again, I'm not, this isn't speculation. When you look at what happened in the equity markets, the world equity markets, you know, they, 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 they voted with their money. Immediately, the Dow dropped over 300 points. The world equity markets have been taking you know, quite a shellacking for a while. Now they're recoup, recouping somewhat. But there's no... There's no uh, there's no hope or change you could believe in. And it would have been different if Romney won, not because he had the great plans and strategies to turn this around, but because people would have believed, they would have said, ah, give him a chance. You know, he just got in there, give him a chance. Now, with Obama back in, and again, the chance he would have come up with, considering what he was talking about, as I see it, would have been empty. I'm a political atheist, so I'm not taking sides here. I only look for facts. I only look at issues and events and facts what they are, not the way I want them to be. But with Obama coming back in, there's no great expectations of anything. And so it's showing. It's showing in the employment numbers. It's showing in the trade numbers. It's showing in the equity numbers. And it's showing by the Federal Reserve's latest announcement that they're going to dump more cheap money into the system. And but when doing that, by the way, you debase the currency. Absolutely. That's part of the process. And part of that is certainly because on the fiscal side of things, Congress can't seem to uh, – they don't know how to put on their own shoes. Well, that well said. It's the inept and the incompetence. You could call them the Republicans or the Democrats. Where I come from, we'd call them the, the Bananos or the Gambinos. <laughs> and, and, and I would say to you, I'll, I, I'd like to ask you a question. Can you tell me one great achievement that has come from Washington when they put their heads together? Whether it's how about those lovely wars that they started and lost in Afghanistan and Iraq? And the one they started and lost, the El Presidente of Los Estados Unidos, did it without going to Congress. That wonderful humanitarian mission in Libya. You know how lovely that is. Oh, and now they're talking about Syria. And look how wonderful their jobs and accomplishments have been in health care and in education. You go down the list. You tell me one thing that Washington has done that they could say, look at the great job that we've done. Uh, okay, you got me. I mean, and it's any just listener not there. out there, please email me. Go to our website, trendsjournal.com, and there's the contact page, the contact information, and I'd like to hear it. Yeah, you're 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 probably going to collect dust on that before you you hear it because it just isn't happening. We're not really seeing it. There, there's a leadership vacuum, isn't there? There's never been one bigger than the one that exists now in my lifetime. Never. Again, as I see it. They're losers at everything they do. Everything they touch, they turn to garbage. And, the, again, I, there's nothing. The people are not enthralled with the leaders. And, by the way, it's not only in the, in the United States. Look what just happened in Europe, the so-called technocrat that everybody was bragging about. Mario Monti, or I like to call him Three Card Monti, he just stepped down. Who's going to come back in? Oh, Berlusconi, 
who Beppe Grillo, the uh, head of the Five Star Movement, calls Berlusconi a psycho dwarf. Look around the world. We have Cameron over there in the U.K. Oh, yeah, another tough-talking chicken hawk. Look how wonderful the U.K. is doing. Who do you have over there in France? Oh, Hollande. Oh, look how the people love him. How about in Spain? Rejoy. Merkel over in Germany. These aren't leaders. All these are, are political royalty. That's all they are. You know, they call themselves public servants. They should start serving the public rather than stepping up and making themselves the untouchables. And so, no, there's a leadership vac vacuum worldwide. It's not only the United States that's in trouble. Look at the Eurozone issues and the sovereign debt crisis. They're no closer to solving it now than they were than when it began over three years ago. Let's throw in the Middle East while we're uh, going through the litany here. Um, the situation in Syria, the situation in Israel, uh, Iran, and now, once again, we're back there uh, looking at problems in Egypt. Sinclair, you've been getting our information for a lot of years. Sure. You go back to February 14th, 2011, when the so-called Arab Spring broke loose in Egypt. We had two men on the street and in Tahrir Square. John Anthony West and Gary Abatelli. John Anthony West is the senior, the, excuse me, the executive editor of the Trends Journal. And he's also renowned for his work in the mystery of the Sphinx and, and other Egyptological work. And Gary Abatelli, a researcher for us. They were there, they, they landed two days before the revolution broke out and were there throughout the whole time. And we wrote from them being on the ground and from what we knew, the headline was, here comes the new boss, same as the old boss, that there would be no change, and that things would only deteriorate. So that's what's going on in Egypt, and it's going to get worse. It's going to devolve into a very bloody civil war if this Muslim Brotherhood guy doesn't step down and they have some kind of real democracy. And by the way, it should also be noted, the Muslim Brotherhood played no role at all in the overthrow of Mubarak, they were on the sidelines, mm -hmm. and then they moved into the forefront. And then you mentioned Libya and Syria. Let's go over to Bahrain. There's a civil war going on over there. It doesn't make the news. Our fifth fleet is stationed there, and they're propping up this emir. You can't call emirs dictators or, or autocrats. They're emirs, just like the king over there in Saudi Arabia. And they're having problems there as well. You go over to Yemen. Yemen is in a full-fledged revolution. Take a trip over to Morocco. They're starting rumblings are starting to happen over there, as well as in Jordan. There are demonstrations taking place against the king. You go over to Spain, go over to Portugal, go over to Greece, go over to Italy. Massive demonstrations continually about the people who have lost everything and have nothing left to lose. You're seeing, they're not, people aren't calling it what it is, and they're not adding it up. It all adds up to us to be the first great war of the 21st century. It's begun. It's begun. It's begun. We're talking with Gerald Salente. Gerald Salente is the ultimate resource when it comes to trends. He has been writing the Trends Journal and TrendsJournal.com, TrendsResearch.com. He's been doing this since 1980, and guess what, folks? He's become quite good at forecasting what's going to be happening in the world. Uh, and if you'd like a copy of the Trends Journal, you can go to trendsjournal.com or trendsresearch.com. Gerald, we've been talking so far about uh, mainly about the past year, but as we come back, I'd like to focus on 2013 and uh, see what's in store. Our guest, Gerald Salente, will continue on Money Radio in just a moment. Retirement is great. Retirement without worry is even better. Find out how to do it at this address, 1510 AM. We're Money Radio. 
few freeway mistakes to work around. Report brought to you by Chapstick. Crashes on I-10 westbound 35th Avenue as well as 67th Avenue. Also one westbound 10 67th Avenue and eastbound as well. Crash on westbound 101 Cave Creek. Collision westbound 202 at the I-10. Make your lips happy in traffic with Chapstick. Get 10 luscious moisturizers and great flavors like new Chapstick Raspberry Cream. All in the coffin cold aisle. Chapstick apply happy. Joe Mack on demand traffic. Money Radio 1510. It's time for Secure Your Future, brought to you by Anil Vazirani and Secured Financial Solutions. Retirement should be a time of celebration, especially if you've done your pre-retirement planning. But life doesn't always work out that way. Sometimes retirement comes sooner than you planned due to illness or loss of a job. But in spite of life's unexpected events, there is much that SFS can do to make the transition into retirement a smooth one. If you're like most people, you have retirement accounts and savings scattered in various places. Secured Financial Solutions can help you consolidate your accounts and view them as just one source. Automate as many of your financial transactions as possible, including routine bill paying and monthly deposits, so that you have the flexibility to run your financial affairs on the road or in a foreign country. Secured Financial Solutions believes that keeping your money safe is their number one priority. That's why SFS shares with you investments designed to navigate the debt crisis that we face as a nation. They'll work with you to position your nest egg to grow your wealth and minimize losses in these volatile markets. SFS specializes in income distribution planning, multi-generational IRAs, and strategies designed to leave a tax-free legacy for your family. When it comes to your health, you're always told to get a second opinion. You should do the same with your money. That's why Secured Financial Solutions and Anil Vazirani want to offer you an unbiased, complimentary second opinion. Secure your future today by calling 800-957-5604, extension 200. That number again is 800-957-5604, extension 200. This has been Secure Your Future, brought to you by Anil Vazirani and Secured Financial Solutions. For more information on securing your future, Visit theRipa.com. Now through December, Discover gives you 5% cash back everywhere you shop online and at department stores on up to $1,500 in purchases. Sign up for 5% now at Discover.com. Money Radio, our guest, Gerald Salenti. He has been publishing the Trends Journal since 1980, forecasting the trends that will affect our lives and that have been affecting our lives, and he does it with remarkable Success. I mean, it's like you've got a crystal ball someplace. That's all I can figure out, Jerry. <laughs> no, I just look at things to the way they are and not the way I want them to be. And you know, being at this this long, you know, I don't take it personally. And, you know, it upsets me, of course. You know, I'm a human being, but and I also believe at this point in my work that the only solutions for for a greater future is for each individual to find the greatness within them. We all have those unique gifts. And when enough people are living fulfilling lives, then everything changes. And to me, that's going to bring on the renaissance, because if we don't have the renaissance, I'm afraid we're going to have ruin. So there is hope for the future. Yes, we are the hope. It's happened before. And you go back to the last renaissance, Sinclair. What did it follow? The Black Plague. Sixty percent of Europe was decimated. The people realized that what they were doing wasn't wasn't healthy, so they went back to the past, the Renaissance. They used to say in Italy at the height of the Renaissance, alle Romana e alla Antica, in the manner of the Romans and the ancients, to describe the quality of their work. And one time, America was about quality. You go to this website, Decaying Detroit, and you look at these beautiful buildings that are going into dust that were built in Detroit at the turn of the last century. And look at the junk we're building today. The beautiful architecture and artwork and craftsmanship this country was renowned for. So to me, it's going back to being great. And there's no reason why we can't. You are going to be publishing the next edition of the Trends Journal in January, and that'll be the look at 2013. Yes. Give us a couple of highlights, Well, one is going to be a major story on hydrofracking, what it means, where it's going, and the pluses and the minuses. Another one is we've identified a huge new educational trend. 
and everybody could understand this very simply. You look at little kids today. They're learning in a whole different way than we are. They have these little handhelds. They're, they're, they're beyond the digital revolution. They're wired very differently. They don't learn with textbooks anymore. So we're, we've identified new educational trends, and this is huge because the educational trend we now have in place, this was designed for the industrial age. You had you know one teacher talking to a big group, and you were taught to learn, follow orders, and do what you were told, and then go into the workplace and do that. That's basically the model that we have. A new model is being created. It's a paradigm shift. Other ones... The millennial generation, it's huge and it's different, and it's going to shape the future, what it means, who they are, and how this one is different, again, than anyone we've ever seen before. We're doing stories, of course, on, on cyber wars, what they're going to mean, how they're going to affect us in the future, and how people, you know, that, that, that are looking for uh, good employment opportunities. This is one not to miss. If you're techno-minded, this is going to be a huge, huge field that's only going to expand. Another one, and it's a big one, safe and plentiful food. 64% of the nation is still in drought. And in areas where they raise cattle and feed them and process them, it's approaching 80%. Yeah. And this is worldwide. We, again, I don't get in the argument, is there climate change, is there not? Are you ready for the future? And if you're going to be ready for the future, you really should look at safe foods because society is breaking up in a lot of different ways, not only financially and educationally, but and as it breaks those splits, there are people that don't want their brains floating in corn syrup. <laughs> Gerald Salenti. Oh, I love reading your work, Gerald. I really do. I'm looking forward to the new edition coming out in January. And I advise everyone to get to trendsresearch.com, trendsresearch.com, or trendsjournal.com. Take your pick. And uh, if you'd like to see what's right around the corner, you got to follow the trends. And nobody does it better than Gerald Salente. Gerald, my best wishes for a happy new year. Oh, and same to you and to everyone listening. Thank you so much for having me on. Always a pleasure. Take care.